So this is the select board meeting of September 27th, 2021. And we will be having a joint meeting with the Board of Health at 6.30. Um, the first item on the agenda is approving the select board minutes of September 13th. I thought they were great. Uh, other than the fact that they were in the wrong order, that, that the first page was the second page in our document. But other than that, yes, I agree. They look great. Yep. So I'm, I'm moved to approve those. I will second it. And all in favor, aye. That's unanimous. Aye. Good. Um, the next item on the agenda is the uh, is the warrants. And um, I did see the note from the accountant that because of the software updates, uh, he was unable to print out the warrants. So all we have is the warrant totals. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just so, so that, and just for people that might be watching, you know, warrant, the warrant totals are always, are often kind of high. And we, in something like this, we provisionally approve them because we need to be able to process the paperwork and pay the bills out of town hall. But each of us goes in and signs them individually. And I always look through them and get questions answered and whatnot. So, but in this case, we'll be approving them um, without having read them. But, um, so we're gonna move to approve the accounts payable warrant for $539,850.88. The payroll warrant for $113,537.48. And the payroll deduction warrant for twenty eight thousand six hundred and twenty six dollars and eighty seven cents. I would second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. But unanimous. Um. Yeah, meetings attended by select board members. Uh, well, I had a couple things. Um, well, you know, we've had conservation commission meetings and we've had conservation commission site visits and they're slowing down. So that's a good thing. The, the, yep. the, uh, conservation commission has been way busier than normal, you know, two or three times as many things going on. I think it's all the stuff happening now that people are getting coming out of the pandemic, but, and they're all good things. Um, there just are lots of lots of meetings, and we had an FCAT uh, board meeting in the last couple of weeks. Uh, nothing, nothing urgent. FCAT's moving along. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so, so I had a, um, a Conway Grammar School committee meeting, um, a Frontier School committee meeting, and I've had a, a number of meetings. Um, with the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership consultant. Um, and so I, and I am speaking at that Grants for Good conference tomorrow. Right. Um, that the, I have the five o'clock speaking, five to 5.30 slot about the carbon credit project. And um, so there's gonna be a ton of people on it and everything. Um, but, and that's led to like new contacts from Nature Conservancy people and, um, others. So it's kind of broadened my horizons in this too. It's very interesting. Uh, but that would put, that puts um, my attendance at the frontier right. capital work. It puts that in dire jeopardy. That's at five 30. Uh, it starts at five 30, but um, like I'm, I'm the last speaker on the thing. And I've been told that there's a couple people that want to speak to me afterwards. So I don't, it's a zoom thing. I don't know, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try. Um, so, uh, public comments, none old business, none new business. Um, appoint, uh, Paul Sarest as a member of the forest and trails committee for a term ending June 30th, 2022 and Suzanne Artemoff to the forest and trails committee for a term ending June 30th, 2023. So I, I'll move to make those appointments or however that works. 100% in favor. Uh, all right. I will second all right. it. So all in favor, aye. Yes. Aye. Yeah. Next one, voting to approve appointment of George Forcier 
as an alternate non-voting member of the historical commission. And I very much in favor of that. So yeah, we met George and you know yeah. had a good chat. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, you know, great. Yeah. So um, that's a unanimous vote as well. So I'll say aye, and yep. I'll vote aye, and, aye. and I'll second it. Yep. Yep. Um, what, so that, or do we want to approve the uniqueness determination in the executive session or like, I get, that's not really to do, I don't know. No, that's, that's just something that the town needs to put forth, um, to explain why it's not going out to bid for a purchase of land. Um, that the, that if the town does purchase this property, that it has unique qualities that means it's the only property that could satisfy what the town is hoping to do. And you sent us that language that was recommended to you from town attorney, and it sure sounded good to me. Um, so I assume that's the language you're going to use. Do we have to vote on it? Or is it? Um, we, we can. I just wanted to make sure I had the approval of the board to move forward um, with that language in the, in the designation. So, Yeah, I, I, I wondered about, like, when I first saw that, I thought that that seemed like a kind of an administrative or like a procedural thing that maybe wasn't like a policy thing, but maybe I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I was really glad just to read the language, um, you, you know, and to know that it's that it came from our town attorney and, and, you know, it helps me really understand what, what, what it's trying to say and why it's trying to say it. So I, I, I appreciate that you send it to us, okay. even if we don't have to approve it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do too. That's a good point, Bob. Um, the next is a town administrator request. Town administrator, what's your request? Um, well, I have a request for two different things here. One is, as you're aware the, of the ARPA or American Rescue Plan Act monies that are coming to the municipality, um, there's a lot of moving parts to dealing with those grant monies. And I would really appreciate having some other eyes on, on, on the money that's coming in and what we might do with it. So I wanted to form a working group. I've actually had a couple of people already um, contact me and offer, lend their assistance. So I think that would be great. So I just wanted to say that I'd like to put that together. And of course, you know, we'll be keeping the select board apprised. And if one of the select board members wants to be on that working group to discuss the use of the ARPA funds, I think that would be great too. Yeah, I think, you know, that um, the reason that I might like try to listen in or, or participate to some extent is just because I'm sort of like the li a, a link between the town and the town schools that like, and there's, mm -hmm. um, that seems to have value to the town. Mm -hmm. So, um, so. I think it would be great for us to have somebody from the board on that group. And Phil, if you want to do it, and you're right, um, your relationship with the schools, it, it keeps dragging you into more things. Yeah. Yeah. But it's when you get to spend money though, that's like <laughs> less, less onerous than most other tasks. Good. Well, and one of the things about this money is that, you know, the CARES Act money is funneled to the town through the state. It comes from the federal government, but it's funneled through the state. And the state helps to make sure that whatever we're putting in for the reimbursement will meet the federal standards. That's not the case with the ARPA funds. We have to figure this out directly on our own. And it's, so that makes it a lot more complicated to make sure that, that we are expending funds in the proper manner. So. Yeah, so I actually have an opinion about this too, just from prior my thing is that I think that we as a community, um, especially like the four towns, when it came to certain decisions about whether to put certain school spending items in it, that there was uh, too much self-censorship and too much failure to ask, like that people just thought it was like too close to the line. And like they just said, we're not going to ask for it because we think they might say no. And to me, 
if it's you not you should ask for it and they might say no but you don't just self-censor yourself like that mm-hmm. and that I, I i want you know so, so that's my thing so if it's a 50 50 we're not sure you ask for it and you let them make the call and um Okay, great. So I will work on putting that group together and thank you, Phil. <laughs> yeah, great. All right. Um, you had two requests. Yeah. Yes, the second one is um, I have been speaking with some members of the community, both about um, issues of how to bring about more community engagement, um, whether it's something like maybe having uh, reviving the um, the dinners that were held on the covered bridge or just different ways in which we can get the community involved in more events around town. And also talking with people about um, economic development in town. What does that, what does Conway want to see for the future? Um, There's also the um, master plan, which gets done every 10 years and is up in for 2023. And of course the planning board spears, spearheads that, but they would be very, you know, um, welcome to having some other folks, you know, take a hand in that and see how we want to plan for the future. So, you know, what kinds of businesses um, would like to come to Conway? What can we do to support the businesses that are already here? And so I I just thought it, it would make sense for us to have some sort of community and economic development committee, also one that could look out for funding because there's a lot of funding in in those areas Um, and could also be made up of members um, from other other boards, you know, maybe somebody from planning or somebody from the financial committee, that kind of thing. Plus that, you know, some members around town. So I was envisioning like a five member committee because it's covering sort of two different areas, but they're intertwined. Um, so that is my proposal that I would like to put together that committee. It's an ambitious effort. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people who are, who are actually quite interested, um, you know, and, and artists, we have a lot of artists in town and I think it would be great to try to figure out some way that we could spotlight the, all the wonderful talent we have in town and our farms. And, you know, there's a lot to, that we could focus on to try to help. Um, encourage both the people who are here and maybe those who might want to move in to do the same thing. Sounds good. So. Sounds good. Do, you, do we need to vote on that? No. I don't know. A, to establish a committee? I think for establishing a committee, it probably wouldn't yeah. hurt that we have a five right. member committee and I can, you know, I can get the membership together and then um, bring you, you know, a set of um, uh, committee bylaws kind of thing just to let you know what we're working on. I wonder if the Conway Currents could take a role in that too. Um, I, I mean, I know they want to people to advertise, but, but you know, we can have a list of who are the auto mechanics in town or who, you, you know, where can you buy groceries in town? Or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you know, it'd be nice to reach out to the, the local um, chambers of commerce and that kind of thing and just kind of use this as our own way to connect and yes having having you know our our business listing in town um be available for people to see what business we have in in the different areas i think would be great yeah and it might encourage people to actually then run a real ad but 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 just that (laughs) to include them in the listing i think yeah would help yeah you know who, and to some extent, Conway next door or whatever it's called, next door Conway, it does that. You know, people, people write in there and they say, "Who can I get to cut down a tree or something like that?" Right. Uh, but people don't know. Right. All right. So I'll move to approve the CEDC. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> The Community and Economic Development Committee. Yeah. But yeah, that would, that's great. Um, Mike Haley going to be on that committee? <laughs> Mike has been our sole community development guy, you know, for years yeah. now. Yes. yes. Well, he'll certainly be asked. <laughs> great. Good. Good. So um, all in favor? 
Aye. Say aye. Aye. Unanimous. Good. So, um, so the next item, I just want to move up. Um, I'm going to use the chair person's discretion to move up from um, the uh, item in the mail to right now because it's an item in the mail that requires the select board to take action. Um, mm. Oh, and, and that was the the letter from F from the Franklin Technical School. Oh yes, not F cat, um, right? That's something. Yeah, uh, yes, the uh, Franklin Tech that they are beginning their union negotiations and that um, the select board must name one of its own um, to participate. And this is where I hide and like nobody can see me on the camera and, um, because I do not wish to do this. Oh, okay. I apologize um, for that. I, I got in this confused um, with another one and I thought you were the... <laughs> no, no, I'm 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 frontier and uh, okay. common grammar, and that's enough. Um, but since Eric is not here, we can just appoint her. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I think that's a good prerogative, and if she won't do it, I'll do it. But but well, if you'd like to, why don't you? I mean, you. you, you I'm you happy to do it. Great. All right. I motion. I motion to. Oh, I I. I appoint or I move to appoint uh, Bob Armstrong as the town's. Maybe I don't know what I'm getting into here, but. Uh, no, I, I, I think it's a pretty tidy, just one union, um, <laughs> nothing that, you know, that's child's play. Try to do it four at once. Yeah, I know. Um, but it's not child's play. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but my understanding okay. is that they have, that my understanding is they have had a good history of good labor relations. Okay. Uh, um, so the, the next item is using the reverse 911 symptom uh, system for notification of emergencies, health related issues, and transfer station information. Yes, so this was another um, thing that, that came up. Um, I've, I've been told that when the uh, reverse 911 came into being that it had been voted that this would be used for emergencies only and not to be used for anything else. And um, since I've had people request that if something's happening with the transfer station, for instance, if it does end up being closed this Wednesday, that we do some kind of townwide call to let people know. Um, and also for health related issues such as COVID, obviously, if there's something going on with that, which you could also classify as an emergency, but it's different than, you know, what you normally think of as, you know, hopefully nothing bad weather related. But so I just wanted um, to see if the select board uh, approved the idea of using the, our reverse 911 for those same, those three issues and only those three issues, unless there's something else that you think should be added in. I know that I was lucky last Sunday that I learned inadvertently that the dump was closed on Sunday and I had not noticed the sign in the center of town and that I fortunately learned that before I loaded my truck because we've been doing some cleaning out here and I had a lot of things that I was about to load into my truck and it would have been an emergency if I had loaded it and then had to unload it. So. I've, I've heard that from a bunch of people this week that there's that issue of like the extra hour taken out of people's lives to have to go back and unload it all again. And then load it again. <laughs> right, right. And, and like the, um, um, the, the uh, bulk container seems to be filling up like so fast that people take all their stuff there and they get there and, you know, after it's been empty just for like one day and they can't put anything in it anymore. And they have to go back home with that stuff. So. I hope we're not being abused like we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I, I don't know. I do suspect those other towns all the time. Take coming into our town. and you, you Well, what we talked about people being able to buy transfer station stickers online and yeah. the requirement yeah. they live in Conway. And, you know, that's. That <laughs> no, they that's can show that, right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. When I saw the thing and I saw the thing, whatever, and you, he, he, the, the person just plainly lists there, there was no deception involved. They were issued a sticker. Um, yeah. That's not good. Oops. So, so do we have your approval? Yes. Is that something we should vote? Yeah, on? I mean, I'm sure, like, I, I vaguely remember that that was done at town meeting. I don't know if that's true or not, but I remember um, when we established, when we voted to establish that ability, that was a modest request for funding to establish that ability. Um, and it was Dave Chichester that, like, asked for it. And I remember, like, vaguely that there was a discussion about limiting it on, and, and if that was like a town meeting thing, I don't know. I don't, I guess if it's a town meeting uh, promise to the voters, I don't know if that's something that we can do. I, I think we can decide what's considered an I, emergency. I, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true because these things are kind of emergencies. Yeah, I mean, what then the dope the, when the dump is unexpectedly closed on a day that you would expect it to be open? Yeah, yep. Really mm -hmm. important. Okay. Actually, hello. I, hello. I I agree with your logic. How is everybody? We're Good. just rearranging Great. ourselves here a bit. We'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So. Uh, I assume that we we're going to that we're going to take that as a motion. I understand. And I'll yeah. second that motion. Yes, good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Good. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, these chairs are really cool. They are. Hi, hmm? Can we get everybody in? Um Tilda's not in. Your little head is in there, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> okay, go in front of me because I'm above you anyway. Yeah, snuggle up. That's all right. We have masks on. Come on, Tilda. Do we have to? I can't see you. Yeah, because we all have to participate. There you are. There we go. I need to move this over. Yeah, but then you're what a no, friendly can come over here and join great. with me. Uh, or we can go join with her if you want. Well, come on. That is a, so that is a proper quorum. Yeah, all assembled. You're welcome to. Oh, <laughs> she has it on over there. Sure. You're welcome. To there. Okay. That will make it easier. I guess they want nothing to do with me over here. No, no. no. Tilda's <laughs> coming. I'm coming Tilda's over. Tilda's coming and she's bringing her ginger snaps. <laughs> oh, oh. Can you hand us some over here? No. Yeah. Yeah. If I could, I would. <laughs> next time, next time. Here they are. It's the cleanest you've ever seen this desk. Yeah. <laughs> Hilda, you walked out of one frame into another, exactly two frames next to each other. It really worked <laughs> perfect. I don't, I don't know what happened. She's like magic. Yeah. Really, come on. We're just trying to get us all in. Where's Erica? In Colorado. Oh. Oh. Too they bad. don't have internet in Colorado. <laughs> Very uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So are are we ready to? I think begin? so. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's five minutes. We're supposed to start at six thirty. It is five minutes early. But That's I'm good. Always, yeah. We're fine. We're ready. Yeah. Good. 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 So, uh, I don't, the joint meeting. I guess we're both supposed to declare it open. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, de I declare this meeting yes. open on yes. the health, board of health side. Yep. And similar for the select board. Excellent. So, um, since this is a rare privilege for the select board, um, would you like to open the the uh, discussion? Um, <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, yes, oh, we would. Um, we thank you for inviting us to meet with you. And the purpose of our meeting is to discuss the, the 
possibility of transferring the overseeing of the transfer station to the select board from the Board of Health. And um, that is what we would like to see happen. And um, so we're putting it out there for you to consider. That is what we're supposed to see. He doesn't have his video on. He's just called in. Oh, yeah. One of you might have to mute since you're in the same room. Okay. I did. Lori did. <laughs> I think so, so I, I guess, you know, my, my question about that is that, you know, this is the middle of a budget cycle. <laughs> How is the budget, you know, is, is, um, I know that you can do transfer from department to department. That's not a problem. It's, uh, it's the, ha, is the budget that exists finite and structured enough that you know precisely what to take out and put in elsewhere. Like, does that make sense? Um, it, your question makes sense, but I don't specifically know the answer to that. I've only been the chair for, this is my first chairmanship meeting, so I don't have the figures for that. Um, so I will have to get back with you on that particular point because I don't know for sure. Because, I mean, the, there, need, there needs to be operating funds to operate it, and right now those are in the custody of the Board of Health. So, and I don't know I mean, I'm, if there's some sort of cooperative agreement. We maybe it can just be continued to be spent directly out of that those current accounts. That's um, what the only thing that might be in question is there are RDF RDF RDP RDP, RDP funds in excess of $7,000. And we would like to use part of that to repair or to replace the roof of the Conway Mall. And, and, and if I may say, it's not we would like, we have voted to move Correct. forward doing that spend. And that account, my understanding is the Board of Health would maintain ownership of those funds going forward because it does fall under Board of Health to direct where those funds go. Correct. If I'm right. <laughs> well, what does RDP stand for? Recycling Dividend Program. And I, I can tell you I'm not completely sure um, that the Recycling Dividend Programs, the expenditures have to do with solid waste. So I would say that if you um, we're transferring management that the RDP would probably end up following the anything to do with solid waste would be my guess. Uh, just so you know, I also did speak with Jan, um, Phil, to your point about um, how a transfer mid budget, you know, mid fiscal year would work. And I believe if I recall correctly, that she was saying that all that has to happen is that the board gives, you know, the select board or whoever's actually in charge, um, the authorization to, you know, um, sign timesheets and stuff coming out of the Board of Health budget until the next uh, fiscal year. That sounds like a much simpler and better idea than moving accounts from department to department. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Agreed. Um, and I, you know, and I, I would just say, you know, to me, this, it, it, this sort of, this, makes sense from the point of view that I think it's unfair to ask any volunteer or almost volunteer, but volunteer to actually do employee paid em em to discipline and instruct and or uh, interact in a supervisory role um, with employees who are paid. It, that's just fundamentally too much to ask of like any volunteer over a long-term effort. It's, you know, and, and so I think it makes sense to have paid employees like doing those types of things um and that, so that, that that to me is why this makes sense mm -hmm, um, yeah. um and we agree wholeheartedly <laughs> all right all right so um you know but i, I don't want to like be cat have the, any the, anybody cast any aspersions on on you all because i think that um given these circumstances that have been um with us these past couple of years and everything else that is going on, I actually think that you, you've, you've done like as good as really anybody could have done giving with this as giving all that's going on. 
and um, like the the reason that this things keep happening, I think it would have these things would have happened no matter no matter what. So, well, especially um, especially this summer. Oh, you're muted. Oh, sorry. Oh. No, I can hear. <laughs> especially <laughs> the years. Especially this summer has been tough. Yeah. And yeah. Jackie's really, uh, Jackie's been challenged. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate your saying that, Phil, because to say it was challenging is really an understatement. And well, I haven't felt it was right to be in the position of disciplining and follow through uh, with the complainants and with the TSAs. So I appreciate it. It's not something I've enjoyed doing. Yeah, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't enjoy doing it either. If I was, you know, just, you know, you're just doing public service. You're trying to help people, and it's sort of outside of that scope of what you signed up, or what most people would voluntarily sign up for. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, One of the discussions we had earlier was about inspections. H have you guys been doing that? And has you know, has the FERCOG inspector been looking at Conway and you guys going along? Um, I will tell you that we really haven't, and that's on the docket to do. Um, just haven't had the capacity to do it. However, the capacity is, is here and now. Because so that's very much a Board of Health thing, and this should yeah. free, up, fr free up your ability to do that, too. Exactly. exactly. And instead of interacting with employees, you can like do board of healthy stuff. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Instead of working at the transfer station. Yes. Jackie, yes. Cat, Tilda can yeah. do other yeah. things. Yeah. So, and you know, the other thing though is like um, our current town administrator is uniquely situated <laughs> due, to her, due to her past yeah. experience. Um, like professionally to like make this a select board project. Right. Like, but, um, you know, we all have a finite lifespan and like at some point <laughs> someone else will be doing this job. But hopefully, hopefully, um, Phil, you yeah. all will set up a better structure and systems because coming in, I think that has lacked existence from what Tilda, myself, Jackie, and Kat have seen. Like, even, like, there's no supervisor, really, at the transfer station. There's nobody, like, telling the guys, you know, systemic, systemically what to do or how things, like, communication has just been very jumbled and random. So, Anything you do to give it a little more structure will be so beneficial to our town overall, I think. Yeah, I agree. So I think this is this might work really well. Or I think so, too. And, and I think that we are in a point of transitioning it to you in a good way. Today, we have interviewed three applicants for the TSA positions. Uh, I know Tim is on your um, agenda, but we also have two very other good candidates that I think should be considered and maybe could be put on your agenda as a last minute addition. Um, yeah, yeah, we can actually do that. Because within, within the 48 hour exception, or if not too bad, we should do it anyway, seriously. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've interviewed Tim Sisk. <laughs> Say stuff so. like that. Um, um, also, a man named Frederick Brown and um, Troy Lucier, and we think all of them would be excellent candidates for consideration for the transfer station. Um, there is a background in uh, like chemical and chemical disposal. There, everyone has had some degree of supervisory experience. They all have a good um good responses and talking about how to deal with customers who were irate or difficult. And I think we couldn't have set a better setup for a transfer than to have these three candidates be able to um, be considered under the select boards 
Um, so what is, what is the desired staffing component going forward, the staffing number? What is the well, desired number? Apparently, there might be some changes uh, according to... Um, to what Veronique and, and the board might see as potential people. Right now, I think there is a supervisory type person, but that person has left. Currently, there's only one um, worker that has had, um, that is still on the transfer station that hasn't left or been ill or had those things. And that one person um, has, had some difficulties in um, in communication. communication. So with the uh, with residents, right? So um, so I believe that there may be some restructuring as to how um, the t transfer station will be going forward. But we have, um, for instance, this Wednesday, there's no one available. I have a call through to Hank, who is like our uh, a second um, potential person that may be available. He worked in the transfer station for a while and then became a backup person, but I haven't heard from him yet today. Um, and then it's going to be Louis, uh, Jackie and I um sharing wednesday oh thank you so so hey. phil in answer to your question like yeah, currently we have one staffer who is you know who has to consistent fill in. in staffing our station so right. i would say when lee lee officially retires i think it's the 30th so when he leaves i mean you've got like three other positions that used to be full and they're not right yeah. so, so you really could use all these three people did we used to have four or five i i, I believe I, we I had was, four sorry. or five in in our pool with one person in reserve which was five eight. i think we yeah. had five and then one person in reserve for when one of those people were not available so um, with the three you interviewed today that would make four plus correct eight. Correct. But that, and all of them are able to work any of the hours that the transfer station is open. Uh, except for so be, uh, because Tim. They're, they're, except, oh, sorry, except for Tim. Tim has to be done by uh, four o'clock. No, he has to be at the end by four. You're right. So He's like 3.30. On a Saturday. But, <laughs> but I guess, you know, if, if, if there's a further, like, you know, it, if say um, Veronique wanted sort of to have a designated, you know, supervising, you know, um, whatever um, re responsible person for the uh, that's responsible for the, you know, whatever that the and, over supervising right, right that would be doing all of the days that it's open basically then like then potentially would we still need because would we still need that number of people? I think you would need at least four. And with maybe yeah. the fifth one being just a fill-in guy, you know, not on the permanent full-time status, but more okay. fill-in yeah. status. Okay, good. Very clear now. Currently, the the um, the transfer station attendants are getting frustrated at the number of people that are leaving uh, electronics or um, chemicals and things that don't belong on the that table outside the transfer station office, and they would like to take it down. Um, ideally, we should have two transfer station workers because we have the various sheds and the cardboard. And while th somebody's dealing with that, they're not able to check for stickers and to help in those other capacities. And so things are being left and they're getting very frustrated. But as I told Jeff this past weekend when I was working with him that we are as much advocates for the transfer station people as we are for the citizens of Conway. So um, that's something that concerns them. So ideally they said that they would like to have two people working instead of just the one. And, I, and I'm gonna reinforce the fact that a majority of transfer stations in Franklin County 
do have two staff people on at a time. I think yeah. there's two towns that don't, and they're like much smaller than ours. Uh, so it is the wise yeah. thing. To and do. I, you know, I can just testify from my volunteer experience there that <laughs> right. when, when when there is a line of cars and there everybody's just waiting, there is just a hundred percent customer service required for those people of of exactly. one and that can like you barely have time to like go in and like push a button but you can't push the button because you're not OSHA certified, but, right. um, but you know, but that, so it, the thing is that I, I, my understanding though, is that there's predictable ebbs and flows and that it might not be necessary to have someone for, to have like multiple people all the time that there might be like a gap of a, I don't know, but that was my, that was my impression of what people were saying. Yeah. No. Wrong. I don't know. I, I can't okay. say that I know an answer to that. Because we because, haven't monitored that personally and closely enough. Because because the last hour that I was there, there was like two cars, but the, right. the first three hours or something, there was like a steady ten people sometimes out the gate like lined up. So mm -hmm. yeah. if, if it's I'm worth sure. doing a study, you know, there you before go. you go and fill that. There well, you go. What I was going to say is, if if I may, from my experience, it. it it may, it may be that there aren't that many people there at the time. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't plenty of work for that person to do in terms of organizing and, you know, making sure everything's ready for the next day. There's a lot of stuff that gets done behind the scenes as well. Mm -hmm. um, and just for safety, I think personally that having two people on at all times just makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah that's a good point, actually. In these Phil, times, Phil in these Bob times we live in. What? Phil and Bob, I, one of the things that we've talked about as a Board of Health a lot, and just to kind of put it out to you all, and hopefully you'll embrace it, is the fact that the salary hourly rate, oh, we God. have heard from yeah. so many people yeah. that it they're is not, not interested because okay. it's so low. Um, yeah, it is not okay for it that. to be this low. It really want to raise and, like now. Mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, we... We can't, we can't, the, when, when, when those people look at comparable wages that are being paid to other town employees and like you think about like standing outside like all day, um, you know, it's not really okay. And, the, but, you know, the flip side of that is that there are people that are like, hey, that minimum wage law doesn't apply to towns. If you can fill those jobs, save us taxpayers money. So, you know, I, there is that side that, that is yeah. out there. I do hear that. But I am not. I am not with that side. I am <laughs> with the side that we need to pay these people more. Yeah, um, they're out there in the and, cold. And yeah, yeah. But crazy. like, well, and we but, haven't done a good job keeping the dump open the hours that it's supposed to be open. Uh, yeah, yeah, and if money is the problem, we need to fix that. It reminds me of the arguments about having decent vehicles in the road crew, you know, and it's because we need to have our snow plowed when it snows. We can't have the same quality of vehicle that I would have in my home because if it doesn't work, my truck doesn't work and I'll get to it next week. But that does not work for the town, either for vehicles or for keeping the dump open three days a week. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but it's it, it's just it's a it's a fairness and it's an equity issue and we've got to be fair with everybody, and um, yeah. So that's but you know when but those things also you know it's generally like not budget wise it's better to like do those things gradually um, rather than suddenly because um, but then again small amounts have very minimal impact so we'll have to take a look at it see what we can do in the next budget cycle but. Um, we have to keep that in mind. Definitely. That have, and I don't I, know, this is something I was, we talked about last week and I don't, we haven't had our meeting yet. So I don't know if there's been an update, but even with Jeff doing all this work on his own the past few weeks, right? I know we talked about the desire to be able to pay him a little more because he's doing the work on of two men. And I know we found out we had to talk to Jan, I think, and I don't know if we ended up doing that, but that's something, if you all know the rules better than we do of whether Jeff can be granted, you know, an extra stipend of some sort to a, 
thank him for being reliable. It would be a good gesture. And I yeah. think Lori said he's been definitely saying, you know, he deserves a little more than what he's been getting. Yeah. So I mean, I, I know the select board has the authority to spend town money. Um, that's, that's like not spoke that that is budget, you know, in minimal amounts for, for those things. I think that there is some, no, but, but no. we're not the board of health. The, you know, the, 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 the oh, board so of health is very like, independent from the select so you, board. So you don't have it in, in your budget to pay an extra stipend then. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. so but no. what about from what about from the lab, labor savings of the person that he whose work he was doing? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. You could pay him double, and the town wouldn't be paying out any extra money. Yeah, we said that. Can we do that? <laughs> well, I think we'd have to talk to Jan. Yeah, find out from Jan. Uh, there must be a way to do it. Well, if if I may, if if you're talking about. Um, well, I guess my question is, did you want to take a vote tonight on whether or not to make this transfer and then decide when it would be effective? Yes. We uh, that's an interesting yeah. view. It might be easier if, if, if after the transfer than before. After the transfer, then you guys don't have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So Phil, do you want to make that motion? And yeah, I'm, I'll make I that. I think motion. we're in agreement. I'll I'll make the motion to transfer custody of the <laughs> of the transfer station from the Board of Health to the Conway Select Board, effective uh, immediately. 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 <laughs> effective immediately. Uh, so. I'm given that that we can deal with given the select board permission to expend money out of the accounts of the board of health, I would second it. And I'll vote. Aye. I, I, I vote, I, I vote. I to the amended motion as well. So, yeah, so Verde, all of these are your that. issues vote. now. I'm yeah. Sorry. These are all your issues you there, now. Think. <laughs> okay, thank you. But I think what we also need here, um, just as a point of order, is for, I know the Board of Health already voted to transfer, but I think we probably also need you to vote to say that the select board can expend funds, um, transfer station designated funds out of the Board of Health budget for the, so the Board of Health needs year. to vote that. Correct. Yeah, because we, we did, but that. the Board of Health should as well. Do yeah. so we have the funds to do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll make the yeah, motion the that we allow the select board to use the um, funds from for TSAs from our budget as they've been laid out. And I, I make that motion. And I second that motion. It's been seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 I, I hate to interrupt, but it isn't just the TSAs that- the, the equipment the, stuff. The, the transfer station the transfer total. Station, yeah. the, 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 um, the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you know you would want us to authorize the bills. Yes, every, yes, yes, yes. yes, correct. Everything regarding the transfer station and its operation, however way it's delineated. I will gladly. Do we have to second that? Do we now? need? Do, uh, do we yes. need a revote on that? It's second. Sure. Okay, uh, all in favor again, say <laughs> aye. We are in favor, aye. the motion so carries. Ah, uh, yes, the transfer station has new parents. <laughs> <laughs> We're really putting the icing on the cake with the three people that we interviewed. Absolutely. Good. All of our problems would be over. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to give, give us their names now and we'll, we can do the appointment under the 48 hour emergency exception? Absolutely, thing. yeah. Uh, the first name is of course, Hold Tim on. Veronique, do you want to do that? I mean, you're now, uh, you know, you're the, you're the boss. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I mean, they sound wonderful. Or do you want to wait? Do you want to wait two weeks and gather your thoughts on it? What, what I would like to do, if you don't mind, is we did have Tim on the agenda for tonight. I would, yeah, but 
apparently the other two people have had also turned in their application at the same time that Tim turned his in. They just didn't oh. end up on the on the agenda. Oh, but they hadn't been turned into me. That's why. Correct. But okay. they they had turned in the application at the same time. At the same time. Okay. Um, well, then, yes, I think we should go ahead. And the only question I would have um, or would like some leeway on is, um, how do I put this? They, they, they're all considered part-time right now. Yeah. Right. They all have a certain number of hours right now. And so what I couldn't say at this moment was, is exactly what hours each would be. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't think they're looking for that. We did tell yeah. them that there was a possibility that the, um, that the Board of Health would not ultimately be the umbrella supervisor of the transfer station. So, um, so they're not expecting, we didn't make any promises. We just said we, that someone would be in touch with them shortly. Yeah, okay. to officially hire them and talk through what that would look like. Okay. Right, so, and this had kind of come up as an emergency because we need somebody right now because we're down to one. Yeah. Exactly. So in light of that, I would say that I am happy to have us, um, if they have, the Board of Health has you know, interviewed them all and nominates them all, then I'm happy to have us appoint them all tonight. Um, but then, you know, I'll have to meet with them all myself and exactly have discussion. Yeah, that's exactly. absolutely. Yes, that would Terrific. be wonderful. <laughs> so the first one, as you know, is Tim Fisk. Now, um, of course, I know where he is. I don't have a phone number for him, but I can get it. Um, the next one is um, Frederick Brown. And the last one is Troy Lucier. Better spell Frederick's first name. Oh, sorry. Frederick is uh, spelled with a C F R E D R I C. But I can, this probably is in your, um, in your um, box now, because you should, I think, have had a, Copy of these, no? I emailed them to Veronique last Okay, Veronique, week. you got those as an email last week. Oh, you're muted, well, Veronique. You were, you were on vacation, but I think it went out the 24th. Okay, that's why I haven't gone through all my emails yet. Sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> no, no worries. So, um, so that those are the good people that we um, have. Uh, <clears throat> interviewed and I think that you'll find them to be good candidates. Good collection of, of well-known town characters. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, Veronique, you remember that um, Hank had said all along that if need be, he would help out. In fact, we're asking Hank if he can work on Wednesday, but he's just an occasional type of person. And there's also another fellow, Tom, out on Sabins Road who I've never met, but I guess he's an occasional person as well to have in your back pocket to call if you needed someone. Thank you. Terrific. Hello. Hey. So as of now, the dump is open on Wednesday. Thanks to you guys. Uh, we're waiting to hear you know, from we're, we're waiting to hear from Hank. If we don't have Hank, we won't be able to open. Yeah, because the these two are not OSHA certified. So I see. They can't do it. I see. And, okay. and we're also splitting the day. To assuming yeah. that there was one actual transfer station worker available. Because right now, Hank would be our only option. There's no other worker to. Um, I could try Hank on the phone. Now, now <laughs> you said that Lee is still a TSA until the 30th? Yes, but he's not available on Wednesday. Uh, okay. <laughs> For the most part, he is, but not then. Okay. I, one of the sets is yours. What? Oh, I was talking to... Uh, we're just finishing up. We're transferring responsibility for the station to the, the select, select board. board. Yeah, I heard about that. Do we need anything? Do you need anything else from us, good folks? Yeah. 
Hey, well, I, I want to just make one other comment, sort of similar to maybe what Phil said, but <laughs> but it has seemed to me the last couple oh, of years the select the uh, the TSAs have become much more customer service focused. You drive your truck up. And one of those guys, if not two guys, leap out of the building and help you unload your car. And I don't ever remember that from 10 years ago. You know, you know, I mean, that really appears to me to have been a change. I'm not sure where that change come from. 10 it's years ago, we had 10 years ago, we had only one TSA. Oh, uh, OK. Well, that could be it. It's, you know, now it we really have, now we, we're supposed to have two. Yeah. So they, so they, they say no. That that goes in the metal bin. That goes here. That you know, yeah. the, the tires go over there. And the, you know, but it, but it really makes things go quicker as, to help the line move along. Yeah, absolutely. So, is there, yeah. I will, I will say though, we tell the guys like they do that because they're just really awesome guys. It's, we always <laughs> say it's not required because it isn't. So just know that like they do it because that's just the type of people we had at hire. Great. There. No, no, it's great. And that's what I did when I worked there. That's right. Hey, tell Bobby shouting up the the cars that will sit there and chat with Lee for like 20 minutes while they're <coughs> cars behind. Yeah. So our, is our is our joint meeting? I think we I think we are all set we have here. Our, Hey, Bob, you were in the dark. I can't I, see I you. I just noticed that I'm in the dark. <laughs> they voted on it. Turn some yeah. lights on, Bob. There we go. Hey. There oh, that's go. much better. Well, thank, thank you all for, um, for working with us. And thank you so much for uh, taking on this responsibility. Sorry. I know you guys have a lot on your plates, too. And I think it's going to be an overall good situation for everyone so i appreciate it very much yeah thank thanks you. thank you very much yeah thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you good night yeah. good night thank, thank you. you good night, good night. Um, so brings us to oops yeah sorry phil yeah I just wanted to ask real quick. I'm, I know they had recommended them, but I'm not sure that the select board yet voted to appoint them, the three candidates. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I moved to appoint those three candidates that we just discussed with the, in the joint, Brown, Fisk, and... Uh, um, Lucier. Yeah, Lucier. I'll second it. I'll vote aye. All in favor, aye. Good. Good. Um, whoops. So I guess we should be doing the, um, the mail, whatever, because before we go into the executive session and the T or the executive session, we want to come out of it and be adjourned, right? Or no. Yes. And I believe you've already, um, done the mail. Shelburne Falls Senior Center. Yeah. I didn't remember that in the packet. No. So that, that was. It, it wasn't there. No. Oh, right. That yes, that only came in today. Sorry, that's why. <laughs> All right. So, is there um, something we need to? Is it just information? I mean, we could hear it. Great. Just information. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry. Um, did you want us to read the letter to you? Well. You can or, forward it to us. Yeah. If it does it require us to do anything. Okay. No, it does not require any any voting or any any action. Okay. Um, so and then uh, let's see. Announcements. Uh, yeah, Lee Gray and Jim Allen have resigned from the transfer station. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can give my update if you like. Great. Well, other announcements, there is um, multiple program grant program uh, things tomorrow. The MVP, uh, uh, that's at one o'clock. Um, and the uh, grants for goodness, um, Mohawk Trail Woodland, Woodland Partnership thing, that's tomorrow at three, uh, at four o'clock. Uh, what else? Yes, give your update, please. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, it's not, it's not a very long update, but um, because I was on vacation most of last week, we did have our cybersecurity training last Friday. And at that meeting, I did um, present Deb Craven with her retirement gift for all of her years of service to Conway. Next, um, on October 5th, 6th, and 7th, I'm going to be working um, from home to do the MCPPO, the first class in getting that designation. David Whittier and I have applied for the Museum on Main Street exhibition um, grant. It's, uh, it's an exhibition put together by the Smithsonian and it's being offered through Mass Humanities. So we've applied to Mass Humanities and are keeping our fingers crossed that they, we would be able to get this um, Crossroads exhibition. Um, it's all about rural life in America um, to be um, housed and exhibited at the Field Memorial Library. There will be six towns in Massachusetts of populations under 12,000 chosen out of all the applicants. So we're hoping that our application is um, right up there at the top. And then just one other update on NextAmp. It, as of September 9th, the last I heard, um, and I, I think Bob, you gave this update before too, but that NextAmp has been connected to the grid and there haven't been any issues. So that was- but, uh, That's, you can't say that, that last thing was like a jinx statement. You can't, you can't like- <laughs> Well, it reflects it, it, back to the fact that we had all of those short blackouts that were occurring, mm -hmm. and it turned out they were all Eversource. They weren't MV. They weren't Nexamp, and and Nexamp has been on with no problems. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it's great to have that happening. Yes, that means that means they start paying on their tax bill to the town. Yes, it also means, and I, yeah. and I believe this has already happened, but they can turn their generator off that was causing noise that the the neighbors, you know, could hear at night, mostly at night, but yeah. Yeah, that's true too. Well, very good. Good things happening, as always. Um, so we can adjourn this meeting into the executive session um, for the statutory reason of discussing the purchase um, and negotiations for the purchase of property at 69 Main Street, Conway. Um, we need a roll call vote to enter executive session, at which time we'd be turning off the recording um, and adjourning directly from the, uh, the executive session. Uh, we'd be adjourning the meeting. So, uh, all those in favor of the executive session, Robert. Bob Armstrong, I will say aye. And I will say aye. So we are in executive session and we can turn the recorder off.